Hey everyone, welcome to the Mobile User Acquisition Show. In the Mobile User Acquisition Show, we talk about how to use mobile user acquisition strategies to grow your app quickly and capital efficiently. The Mobile User Acquisition Show is presented by me, Shamant Rao, mobile growth leader and founder and CEO of the mobile growth consulting firm, Rocketship HQ. Each episode includes strategies, tips, and pointers from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition that you can use to unlock tremendous growth for your app in a sustainable and capital-efficient manner. Our guest today is Matej Lancharic. Matej is the Director of User Acquisition at Superscale and a mobile user acquisition consultant who has worked on a number of very different games. He's worked on soft launches, on massively scaled campaigns, and on everything in between while managing over 10 million in user acquisition spends. In today's episode, we dive into the art of the soft launch, which is something that's so crucial for the success of any game, just because it proves out everything that has to come afterward in a global launch. We look at the three key stages of a soft launch and why it's important to nail every single one of these. Also, Matej is teaching the course Soft Launch Strategy for Mobile Games at the Mobile Dev Memo Academy. If you are interested in going much deeper into soft launches and to dive into every aspect of soft launches from ASO to UA to early testing, you should definitely check out his course on the Mobile Dev Memo Academy at mdm.academy. I'm very excited to welcome Matej Lancharic to the Mobile User Acquisition Show. Matej, welcome and welcome back. Thank you very much for having me again. I um, really yeah. enjoyed the, the last episode with, uh, with me when we talked about the hyper casual UA. Yeah. And I'm even more excited now. Indeed, Thanks. indeed. Quite a few people have referenced your hyper casual episode, some of our clients, some of our team as well. Uh, so, definitely excited to have you back. Uh, also, and we are going to link to this, Matej is going to be teaching a course on the Mobile Dev Memo Academy. A uh, few folks can check that out on mdm.academy. We'll link to that in the show notes in the transcript just as well. And certainly the, uh, today's in today's episode, we're going to talk about what is one of the specialties for Matej. This is also the topic of his uh, Mobile Dev Memo Academy, which is soft launches really which can be a whole universe in itself. Today, we're gonna to talk about the three stages of a soft launch, right? uh, the three key steps of a soft launch that I think every app developer should nail to really go global. Uh, so Mate, uh, to start off, can you tell us what the three stages are? Yeah, of course, uh, I mean, First of all, I, I think that uh, like the soft launch is like super important to, to every developer. And uh, so basically I'm trying to divide the soft launch and not only me, but I think like it's like the common knowledge to these three stages as you, as you mentioned. And it's uh, like the technical phase, then like the retention phase or the retention stage. And then uh, finally monetization stage. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, let's dive into each of these three stages mm -hmm. in sequence. Uh, the technical phase, you would I would imagine, has to, is somewhat evident. But can you speak to what happens in the technical phase of a soft launch? Of course. I mean, um, the technical phase is like the the first thing that uh, you do after the the game is developed in the development, and you want to try and test the the game stability and the like the whole um tracking before like started to spend um like um a lot of a lot of money in the in the next stages but then like this stage is all, all about like identifying the the issues uh, bugs testing the infrastructure all the tools like data tracking and attribution so everything mm -hmm. from the from the technical side of the game and then like finding and, and fixing those critical bugs that might occur while you know setting up the, the attribution platform or facebook sdk or any other sdk you might have in the sure. in, in the game in the game and basically in this stage i mean you don't need like a lot of budgets here because you just can 
can test this with uh, with a small, I don't know, like 50 or, or 100 dollar budget. Uh, because um, we are like acquiring um, players from tier four countries. Why tier four? And what does it mean? It's like like Philippines or Mexico or any other country that have uh, that has very low CPIs. Mm -hmm. Because you want to you know um, spend the budget effect effectively, and you don't want to test uh, the technicalities in uh, I don't know in UK or any other tier one country because it would sure. be expensive. Sure. Right, and it certainly makes sense. You are testing the waters, you're making sure the game is stable, uh, and you're sending very cheap traffic because all you want to make yep. sure is the game doesn't break. Exactly. What are some of the key metrics to look for during this stage? And you know, when do you say during the technical testing phase that, okay, everything is good, we can go to the next stage. What are some of the criteria you look for? So basically, um, looking at uh, mostly a crash rate or an AR rate, I mean, everything that uh, blocks people to from like playing the game, uh, mm -hmm. we just need to, we just need to be 100% sure that uh, people can play it uh, and play it well. Sure. And then if, uh, if we see like all the installs uh, we shoot in, uh, in attribution platform or Facebook or, or any other UA channel you, you use for this. Well, I, I would suggest like going for Facebook because it's like super convenient anyway. Mm -hmm. and I use it as well. And so basically like checking if uh, what we see in Facebook matches with the attribution platform and matches with the, with the store itself. So these, right. would, these would be like the main, main points to, to look for. Right. So on the one hand, you are looking at data integrity, which is, is my data actually captured accurately yep. in Facebook, in attribution? Then you're also looking at technical stability. You're looking at crashes and ANRs. Are there benchmarks? And you know, for those of the listeners who aren't aware, can you tell us what is ANR? And also tell us what sort of benchmarks might they look for with crashes and ANRs? Yeah, so an ANR app not responding uh, rate. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm checking this in the in the Google Play console because Google Play has this app, app Vitals where you can find all the benchmarks. I mean, ANR, I think it's like under 1% and or under like 0.5% and then crash rate uh, benchmark or like threshold should be like under 1%. Uh, you can find it in the, in the app vitals in Google Play Console, uh, where I always look uh, when uh, yeah. you know when I see any like crash rate spikes or uh, any sure. spikes. Sure. On iOS, how might they find this out? Um, actually, there is very similar thing in in the iOS iTunes Console. Uh, we need to okay. check that like what's the what was the exact place, but it's like very similar thing. Fair enough. And I imagine there are third parties also that allow you to track some of these things. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, for folks who are curious, I've used Hockey app and mm -hmm. I believe Crashlytics lets you track these for, for folks who are curious, right? And, you know, so, right, you're like, okay, my crash rates are under 1%, under one percent, is under half a percent. We know it's somewhat technically stable. We know the installs are lighting up. Next is you're like, okay, what's the next stage? What are you looking at in this, this stage? Yeah, so basically um, from the technical stage, like going smoothly to the retention stage um, yeah. and then like adding um, adding more countries, obviously not tier four countries, but then like um, tier two or tier, tier one countries, mostly mm -hmm. tier two to test the retention and not like spend a lot of uh, a lot of money with the high, high CPIs. Uh, so basically here I'm, I'm looking for countries like um, Netherlands, for example, or Denmark or, or any, any other European countries. And then in here, in, in this stage, uh, what is really important is like to measure the tutorial completion rate besides the, the classic retention day one, day seven, and day 28. Mm -hmm. But also like the first time user experience, the onboarding flow of the user and like measuring each step uh, from, the, from the flow to check like if there is mm -hmm. not any problem which might, uh, which might cause people to drop out. So basically you have tutorial, then like checking also like um, if there is not any problem in, in the tutorial flow, and then maybe also like started the testing um, tutorials, right? Uh, like A-B testing, which tutorial could bring better results, better retention, which, which of those tutorial 
could potentially explain what this this came about uh, in in a better way. So these these are like main main focuses, also like from the product side. But then obviously, like in this stage, uh, we should be thinking about um, like starting testing creatives um, and maybe like adding the iOS build. So basically, like what what I didn't mention before, um, I mean I started to do soft launches um, on the Google Play. Why? Because like I'm not, I don't want to wait two days for Apple to review the game. Basically, right. <laughs> basically, right. yeah, the game is live on, on Google Play in, in a couple of hours. So, so then uh, that's why I mentioned that adding the iOS build later on um, is very much appreciated, and you know, uh, you want to compare the results uh, between iOS and, and Google Play builds. Right. So you start with uh, iOS later on after mm -hmm. Android and in the retention test phase, you're essentially seeing is the, are the users getting the user experience? Are the users playing? Are the, you know, is there a problem with the user flow? Right? Because if, you yeah. know, if the users understand what the game is about, then they, the retention is going to be strong. Exactly. It's as much about the gameplay rather than the technology mm -hmm. at this point in time i mean obviously like you're still still checking if there is something there is not something wrong with the, the sure. technicalities but uh yeah mostly focusing on on the product and the flow of the sure. of the players sure are there benchmarks that folks should look for and i imagine this would be different by genre you know a yeah. casino game would have different retention you know compared to a hyper casual but are there broad benchmarks that people could look for? Yeah, there there are these uh, these benchmarks. Uh, they're known in the in in the gaming industry is like forty twenty ten. It's like forty day one, twenty day seven, and thirty uh, ten percent. I mean, but it, as you said, different genres, uh, different uh, benchmarks. I would say. I mean, if you have like um, forty day one. It's still very, uh, very solid day one, uh, day one retention. Um, uh, but if you can get like 60 day one in, for example, for hyper casuals, yeah. it's, then it's perfect. Yeah. Right. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like for any other genre, you can, if you can get 60% day one, that's pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. 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 Certainly. Certainly. Right. So uh, let's assume an app hits, you know, stage one and stage two. Stage one, their crash rates, everything is good. Mm -hmm. Uh, the data is stable. Stage two, they're hitting 40, 20, 10, or whatever their benchmark mm -hmm. is. They move on to the third stage. What's the third stage? Yeah, so the third stage would be the, the monetization stage. And, and the thing is that the, the retention stage and the monetization stage could uh, work or could be simultaneously yeah. because it depends on the on the capacity of the, of the team and like, um, because Obviously, like um, if your team is small and you can focus only on on couple of things, then uh, like starting with retention is is uh, somehow um, easy easier. And then yeah. if you are still uh, if you're like um, okay with the retention that you were you you were able to to achieve, then then moving up to the monetization stage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then like what what are we measuring in the monetization stage? So uh, basically like all the monetization KPIs are like yeah. conversion rate to payment, um, average revenue per user, average revenue per DAO, um, LTV basically in this, in this stage, we are like starting to focus more on the ROAS campaigns and, and purchase yeah. optimized campaigns to, to have a better picture about the, the monetization KPIs. And then like the goal here in the, in this stage could be like achieving the LTV higher than the CPI, obviously, or, sure. or certain percentage of, of ROAS at uh, day, I don't know, day X, day seven, day 20, sure. day 30, depends on the, on the benchmarks themselves. And there's like, it's very much important to be in constant um, discussion with the product team and the analytics team to be able to, to say uh, what's going on uh, yeah. with the game and with the marketing and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, when you're testing monetization, the users are going to be more expensive. Your marketing mm -hmm. budget has to be larger. And yeah. also you, you have to be mindful of the conversion rate because if you have to get one payer, you need yeah. 100 installers. Right? So that adds to the cost. So what 
volume of users should anybody aim for during the monetization stage? Yeah, so basically, um, this is why I mentioned the, the constant discussion uh, uh, with, the, with the analytics team because um, they, would, they would set uh, some targets for you. For example, I don't know, we need 500 paying users, give or take, because th those amount of, of users will give us um, statistically significant um, yeah. um, numbers that we can make a, a better, deci better decision. Sure. So, yeah, no, it can be 500. It can be more. Depends on the on the discussions and uh, like what the what the analytics um, can say about that. But then sure. it, again, if uh, as you mentioned that um, if you have a different like conversion to payment, then you need even more instant because we are still like talking about the paying users. So if you have certain percentage like uh, in terms of conversion rate to payment, then you would you would need I know. Like, 10,000 users uh, for this uh, for month or 20,000 yeah. which can be obviously pretty expensive but yeah. you know this is the time when uh, when you can prepare for the global launch and then uh, you are budgeting or like trying to allocate some budget for for global launch so you need to be not 100% sure but 200% sure sure uh, even sure. more so you just want to waste the money Sure. So that's why I mean that's why obviously like monetization stage would be the most expensive, but you can um, definitely benefit from from this from this stage. Yeah, and you know something I also like to point out to people who ask about the expense is mm -hmm. if you will know within one week if it's really bad, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you don't need five hundred payers to know it's really bad, right? Yeah. If your first thirty payers. You're, you're very, very ROI negative. You don't yeah. need to wait for 500. Exactly. Right? Uh, so I think that's one way they can look at the expense that is involved in the monetization test. Of course, but you need to have this uh, budget allocated beforehand exactly. because then um, yeah. you know what to, what to count it um, in, in P&Ls for the team, for the yeah. game and everything. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and this may be somewhat obvious, but... I'm curious, why mm -hmm. should we do the retention test before the monetization test? Why not the other way around? I mean, uh, as, as I mentioned, the retention, and you're still like focusing on the, the, um, the user flow and, uh, and the things that, um, that, are, that have higher impact on the, on the retention, because like, you know, from the beginning of the game and early stage of the, of the player journey, and then like the monetization is um, somehow like a little bit later in the, in the stage. So it's, it's much easier from, for me and from the team focuses on the early stage of the player, of fly, player funnel. And yeah. then if that is, um, if that is like um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the good shape, then obviously like moving to the monetization stage would be, would be the process. Right, right. So it's almost like, you check this box before you actually invest more into the game itself. Of course, because because yeah. you are you are acquiring users, and if you have a if you have a problem with the re retention, then obviously like the the higher yeah. funnel metrics, you already losing de uh, there, so yeah. you will lose even more on the down down funnel right. metrics on, on the on the players. Right. So you're almost looking at it as look, let's test the up funnel metrics before we test the down funnel metrics. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I know you said you want to get 500 paying users for the monetization stage. What might be the kind of user volume you should look for for the technical stage and the retention stage? Yeah, so basically for technical stage, I mean, 100 users, that's, uh, that's pretty, much, uh, pretty much it, if everything yeah. is okay. I mean, yeah. the first, uh, first round of testing and the technical test is like 100, 100 users. Then if everything is fine, then moving on. If if there is obviously some problem, then you need to acquire more. But it's not like in thousand; it's like yeah. in hundreds, and um, it's right. really like fifty or, or fifty bucks or or one hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. In retention stage, depends on like how how much uh, you want to A/B test and what do you want like to A/B test. I mean, if you're A/B testing tutorial, then you you need a thousand, like four thousand or or. A, like a lot, lot more uh, thousand players than uh, in the in the technical stage. Sure. So, you know, I'm always looking for like 
at least like 200 uh, daily new users uh, just to right. have like better study or statistically significant um, yeah. amount of players. I imagine if you have 200 per day, you will also see how things change over time. Exactly. Well, right. So yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. So you have, you know, like the, some threshold of new pl players and if you make uh, like any uh, any changes to the game or like new builds so you can yeah. compare apples to apples exactly you can do before and after pre-post analysis to yeah start. exactly yeah so Mate, you outlined these three stages and obviously all of them are crucial does this approach change if you have let's say a game that's fully ad monetized or let's just say this is a non-gaming app that's a subscription app uh, does this approach change? How would you suggest changing, if at all? Uh, I mean, it's it's still monet, it's still monetization, so uh, mm -hmm. you still need to um, somehow um, improve the monetization metrics uh, during the monetization stage, even if it's like ad monetized games. So you need to find the proper placements. You need to work on the sure. um, ECPMs. On, you need to work still still need to work on the monetization. It just like you know. A yeah. different uh, different method it's yeah. subscription based apps i would say i don't have that much experience with like soft launches with uh, like um, subscription based apps but yeah. again it's like the the structure and the framework is similar you just need to adjust it to the to the product you have again yeah. if it's subscription then again it's like the monetization method so you need to yeah. find the proper balance you need to find the proper price yeah. pricing for the for the subscription and, and so on yeah sure and i imagine you can just adjust this approach like for retention tests you could look at the free trial exactly the tutorial right and monetization you just do the monetization subscription completion i mean That's, yes but you still still need to need to look at the and the player, well, not exactly like for app, like the people, funnel and people onboarding still, right. if there is not, not a problem in the onboarding process. So exact, you know, uh, if I download the app, I yeah. still need to create the, create the account, start like um, right. doing anything in the app. So this, all these um, flows, we need to check that as well for the, for the, any app. Certainly, certainly. And what do you see are some of the common mistakes that developers make during their soft launch? Yeah, so the first, yeah, first of all, um, starting for starting the, the soft launch on iOS. I mean, I don't know why I, I don't know why Supercell does it, but I mean, it's, it's Supercell, so they can do whatever <laughs> they, they want. Uh, but then, like uh, a lot of people from from Finland start on on iOS, which can be. Um, you know, slightly, slight pain in the ass because yeah. it takes a lot of time to, to get uh, the game approved. So I would say like this, this would be the first thing. Uh, then the second thing or the mistake that pe people make is uh, they think that the soft launch can be done in like one month yeah. because they think like, yeah, well, we, we did all, the, all everything needed in, in the development and uh, now we just, you know, uh, launched launch the game in, in a couple of countries and uh, do some iterations and then the game is ready for, for global launch in one month. But well, definitely not. I mean, the, you still need to be in the soft launch for, I don't know, like three to six months to, you know, to see how the players and like, or the cohorts uh, mature. Yeah. You need to know, you need, you know, there's still like a lot of things you, you need to test, like creative testing, um, testing a new um, UA channels. There's like, Tons of stuff you need to do before going global, yeah. And you just can't do it in one month. That just like can't happen. Yeah, and I think it's also because a lot of people are like, we'll test for one month and everything yeah. will be amazing. Yeah. Uh, but that rarely happens, right? And exactly. If things go wrong, it takes you at least a couple of months to fix it. Uh, so yeah. certainly, that's understandable. What's what's the typical duration that you see and you recommend? doing a soft launch bar? Well, I would say like uh, at least like six months. I mean, you can do yeah. soft launch in three months, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's like very, very tough, but yeah. it, it's doable, it's doable. Yeah. But six months would be like, like uh, a good, uh, good timeline. Sure. Um, and, but you know, yeah. Depends on like several factors, like uh, yeah. if the, the game or the, the company has a, um, 
many on the bank account they or they need to you know launch the game as soon as possible so there is like sure. other things that you need to think about sure. but then like i would say like half a year that's something like a healthy uh, timeline sure. sure sure and uh, if they have a six month soft launch what percentage of time goes into each of these three stages also basically like the technical stage is um that's just one or two weeks depends on the on the number of issues we will find yeah. and then like each stage like three months basically uh okay. would be would be something that i would definitely uh, personally aim for cool. that certainly makes sense and uh, hopefully i think what listeners will take away from this is that it takes time to get a soft launch right and it makes sense to put in the time and effort to iron out the details before you go global because that's really when you can get the most bang for your buck right yeah. and I, I think that i hope that's what people take away from this uh but okay. also uh, if yeah, i if yeah. i may ju uh, just jump uh, right this into this uh with one comment also like um like regarding the global launch and like going global but also we need to um, speak about the, the other side like not only going global but also like kill the game because if you don't what? see you are like your kpis are improving and you're just right. like stagnating on the same same numbers then it, it's just better to kill the game right away because you are like missing out of yeah. the opportunity of creating something better and something else so this is something that also need to be discussed and need to keep uh, listeners in mind that um you know, either yeah. kill or going global. Yes, that's an option just as well. That's always an option on the table. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also something that developers miss when they're like, oh, I will soft launch for one month and I will go big. And yeah. I think it's important for them to realize soft launch might result in you're having to kill the game. Exactly, yeah. It's an important yeah, yeah. consideration. If, if it's not pleasant to confront, but it's certainly a possibility. Yeah, unfortunately, this this might happen. And if you find out that you are going to kill the game, uh, well, sooner the better, I would say, because uh -huh. you're just not wasting time right. on the on the game that just you can't improve. Right, right, right. Certainly, certainly something to be very, very mindful of. Certainly something to be very cognizant of. But uh, as always, this has been incredibly instructive. Excited to have you again. Uh, you know, and uh, for folks who are listening, if you guys want to go deeper, uh, please check out Matej's course on the Mobile Dev Memo Academy, Soft Launch Strategy for Mobile Games. But as Matej pointed out, you, the very same approach is very much applicable to even if this is not a game that you're looking to soft launch. Definitely, I think Matej goes much, much deeper into not just this, but a lot of other aspects of soft launching, UA, creative testing, A, so a lot of things. Definitely check, check out his course. Uh, Mate, on that note, uh, perhaps this is a good time to wrap. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much for having me again. Uh, I had a very good time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. For more tips, pointers, and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here or check out our blog, rocketshiphq.com slash blog. Thank you.